It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> and today we're talking about the weather. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we're talking about the weather is because it's episode five of Living Language. And we find that if you can describe the weather in a new and interesting way, then usually your writing is lively and interesting and people want to read it. Yes. If you start your story with... It was a dark and stormy night. People will automatically think you're in a writing competition because there's many a writing competition that starts like that. There's actually a writing competition called the Edward Bulwer Lytton Writing Competition, which is for the worst first line in a story ever, and it's based off a dark and stormy night as an opening line in a story. Yeah, and the reason we're talking about it is because with some of our young writers, being able to move their stories forward through time has become quite a yeah. problem for them. So the way that we've decided to do it is to teach them to write about the weather, to show seasons and days and weeks and Christmas because it's snowing because it's Christmas. Unless you're in Australia, in which case it's really hot and you're in your bedroom sweating and you can't go play cricket because it's really hot and you get sad. Yeah, so you really don't have to say it's six o'clock on a Friday night because you know it is because it's... The, the way of the light. You can do this in painting and film and theatre. A lot of the light angles and things are very good for showing time, but it might, might be a bit harder when you're writing because you can't show it visually. So we're here to talk to you about the idea of the pathetic fallacy, which is when you use the weather to... It is, it's a literary technique when you use the weather to mimic your character's emotions, and that's where a dark and stormy night comes in, because the, the brooding nature of this description makes us think of dark and sombre times with our characters, and it gets us into a dramatic mood, and this... yeah. Yeah, and see, that's, that's what I brought you on to hear about today. Fallacy... what are you? Pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy, really. It's just a dark and stormy night described in new and interesting ways. <laughs> yeah, like for example, Macbeth, when they say, you know, fair, fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. It's just a lot of the descriptions of Shakespeare are based in the natural world and the weather, and it's very interesting how we can look at our characters' emotions being linked to that through the idea of atmosphere. Yeah, so our challenge to you today, everybody, guess what? Describe the weather. Describe Do you want weather. to start by looking at the weather outside the window and talking about how you could describe that? I can see a small bit of light, like white sky with grey clouds. And I'm thinking of some enchanted evening on a yacht. I'm in the wit Sundays, <laughs> Annie Seaton, eat your hair, eat your heart out. <laughs> yeah. And you're standing at the yacht and you're looking out over the expanse of the sea and it's grey and dark. dark. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, if you can't do better than that, then yeah. we're not doing any more lively language, living <laughs> language lively. Yeah. So for example, for look at one more thing just before we go. I just want to mention that um, Marcus Zusak in The Book Thief has this really interesting way with, um, for example, his narrator is deaf and deaf doesn't like focusing on all the deaf because it gets depressing. So whenever he goes to find a dead soul, he looks at the sky and notices what colour it is. And that's how the um, that's how the book opens. He says it was chocolate-coloured sky, dark, dark chocolate. Wow. I know. There you go, everybody. <laughs> find your own example from your own favourite books. And that would be link it to us. That would be really cool. Yeah. yeah email us. Facebook live us, tell us, tell us about your favourite weather. Uh, stars have been used, speaking of yachts, um, stars have been since millennia talking about weather. Yeah, navigating and things like that, is that what we're talking about? Well, outback skies goes very well with yachts. I think we should stop. Okay. No, there are no yachts in the outback, but sure. <laughs> ah. Okay, that's bye for another episode of... Moving Language. Moving Language. Turn it off! Our cameraman is so unreliable!